The next speaker is Dr. Kat Cotter. To introduce her, I'd like to let you know that she is a doctor of chiropractic and a certified anti-aging practitioner. She specializes in nutrition and especially super immunity for over 30 years. She has customized accomplished anti-aging program for individuals like personalized nutrition who want to slow down the rate at which they are aging. She helps people change their diet, their lifestyle, both their psychology, their bodies, and the way they practice their lives. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kat Cotter. Thank you. Hello, all. I'm happy to be here. I would like to speak today uh, a little bit about our bodies. And uh, as we know, the human body today is susceptible to injury, disease, aging, and death. And until science advances to the point of upgrading our body so we don't have to worry about these issues, we need to find ways to protect ourselves as much as possible. I do believe that science and technology may one day help us to actually become immune to possibly all diseases, cancers, metabolic diseases such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and maybe even the tiny terrorists, uh, the virus and bacterial threats. But as long as we are in this biologically fragile state, we do need to protect ourselves as best we can against the things that are killing us today, heart disease, cancer, metabolic diseases, and infectious agents. And yes, one day, we may each become a $6 million man or a bionic woman, uh, but until then, uh, I think that we, until we can become superheroes, let's start with having a superhero immune system. Now I'm an anti-aging practitioner and I work with patients and clients with this goal to optimize their health and help them stay as healthy as possible uh, for as long as possible, um, slowing down their aging as much as possible until science can stop and eventually reverse it. You've heard the saying, live long enough to live forever. Well, that's what I work on every day. And um, I notice that everything that we do to create super longevity also creates super immunity. Uh, so with everything we've been through in the last few months, what I'm going to talk about today is how to create a superhero immune system. Now, I don't know when we're going to reach the post-pandemic stage of COVID-19. However, when we do, uh, what I realized is that the next pandemic is literally around the corner, uh, or the next one, the one that might be the one that kills billions. In his book, How to Survive a Pandemic, Dr. Michael Greger, uh, who is an internationally recognized expert on public health and infectious disease, he said he believes, we didn't know when it started, what COVID-19 would do, but he said, it looks like COVID may really just be a dress rehearsal for the big one. He said COVID-19 caught us all off guard, but now we're a little more prepared, though there isn't really that much preparation we can do. Uh, H5N1, uh, or another mutated version of the original avian flu, um, he said that most infectious disease experts around the world are most afraid of, of one of those because they are much more deadly, uh, killing 40% of those infected versus the 2% that this COVID-19 seems to be doing. He said uh, they're afraid that one of these might literally kill one and a half billion people and possibly within six months. And they just don't know how many mutations away these are from becoming virulent and communicable enough. Um, so we could be years away or we could be months away. Uh, so they also say that while we are so much more technologically advanced today than we were, let's say, in the 1918 pandemic, we're really not much more equipped nor uh, prepared than we were a hundred years ago. Over a hundred years ago, they didn't even know what a virus was. Well, we now do, but how much more prepared really are we? These viruses are continuing to mutate at a more and more rapid rate. 
because we're providing them with the perfect situations to do so. Uh, the ever increasing contained animal feeding operations, uh, the huge number of people now on the planet, the faster and more increasing amount of travel. For example, some people that were around might remember the Hong Kong flu. That was an avian flu epidemic that was in 68, 69, and 70. Uh, it killed several million people. At that time, there were millions of chickens in feeding operations. Now there are billions. So while COVID-19 might not be the one, uh, we do need to prepare for any coming pandemics that might come in the future. Now, since we're not in charge of the world's poultry industry, we may not be able to make changes to that system, but we could potentially buy only pastured chicken, turkey, and beef, or switch to a vegan diet, or maybe at least a more plant-based diet. Um, so what else can we do? Count on a vaccine. I hear so many people saying we will not be safe until we get a vaccine. And a lot of people I think out there are under the idea that once they come up with this vaccine, then people can take off their masks and we'll be okay. However, okay, uh, even if they do come up with a vaccine that works, it will be a vaccine that works for COVID-19 just one of thousands of infectious diseases. So what about all the other infectious diseases that keep mutating, okay? For example, they've been trying to create a vaccine for um, H5N1, which is a much more virulent version of the original avian flu. They've been working on that for 15 years. They haven't been able to create one vaccine that worked. The problem, uh, one of the problems is that it continues to mutate. So if we can't count on vaccines to save us, uh, then that's, that's why I uh, am centering on trying to create a super immune system. So the first thing to do would be to eliminate any actual risk factors. If you have heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, or just being overweight, as you know, raises, they say that not obesity, but just being overweight raises your risk factor by six times. Uh, and yes, age is also a risk factor. I'm in my 60s. And even though I don't have any of the other risk factors and I feel in relatively good shape, and a lot of times I think, hey, even if I catch the virus, I'll, uh, I have a good immune system. Uh, I'll have a few days of uh, the flu and, and I'll be fine. But the truth is, whether some of us want to admit it or not, if we're no longer in our 20s and 30s, uh, we can keep ourselves in as good shape as possible, but aging is definitely, uh, you know, uh, associated with market declines in, in our immune system. Now, um, as Maria mentioned, Dr. Gregory Fay is working on regenerating the thymus gland, which is a major part of our immune system. And that's, that's good. And until then, uh, what do we do right now? Okay, so let's say you are healthy without any of those risk factors or you've worked on those. And uh, the next thing I would look at are tests. The more, the better. Get as many blood tests as possible. Uh, I, I really like that because even if you feel good, this is a real roadmap of what's going on inside. And I don't look at tests the, re the way an average doctor might. I'm not looking just for the absence of disease. I am looking for optimal health. So where do you start? Uh, regular CBC, then you wanna make sure you look at your thyroid, your blood sugar, your levels of vitamin D, omega-3. Next, your diet. Now, whether someone says I'm a carnivore, I'm a omnivore, I'm a vegetarian, how about becoming a nutritarian? Meaning that your goal is to eat as the most nutritionally dense immune boosting foods that you can. Dr. Joel Furman in his book, Super Immunity, said that what they found is that in most cases, when exposed to a healthy, well-nourished body, uh, when, it, when this happens, um, it may remain just harmless. Our vulnerability 
to the initial virus and our inability to fight off the virus once we become exposed is directly affected by the quality of our diet prior to being exposed. So let's think about the implications of this. This means poor nutrition not only makes us more susceptible to getting the virus, but significantly impacts the length and severity of an illness. So what might cause a serious or even life-threatening infection in a person eating uh, a conventional, kind of the standard American diet, might not even result in symptoms of illness in, in a uh, nutritionally competent person. So you can social distance, you can wear a mask, not touch your face without washing your hands first. But I do believe that having comprehensive nutritional adequacy is, is my best defense. Now, some of the most nu nutrient dense foods and superfoods are greens, all greens. I eat a big salad. I eat raw greens. I also eat a lot of cooked greens. I like to blend them up into a creamy soup. So I'm getting all the greens. I'm getting onions, garlic, mushrooms, uh, beans, berries, pomegranates, uh, nuts, seeds. Uh, if you go to nutritionfacts.org and you type in immune, you will see lots of foods that, in, that uh, boost your immune function. And um, most of you have heard of the 1% and the 99%. And no, I'm not talking about it in financial or political terms. What I'm talking about is that 99% of you is made up of bacterial or other foreign DNA. So you are really not, you heard you are what you eat. I say you're not what you eat. You are what your bacteria, your gut bacteria is, eats and is able to digest and assimilate. So along with adding as many nutritionally dense foods as possible, you want to eat for them. So along with probiotics and prebiotics, uh, you may want to eliminate or lessen foods that might damage the lining of your gut. Uh, some experts believe that high lectin foods can do that. You can find a list of the highest uh, lectin containing foods online. Um, also, I recommend a food sensitivity test and whatever it comes back with. Uh, I had one done and it showed my superfoods and my own personal kryptonite foods. Um, I made a little card that had my best foods and the foods I should stay away from. I added that to my diet. So, I do think uh, that's, that's really a good idea. And another thing I think is non-negotiable in today's world is uh, an organic diet, eating as many organic foods as possible because you've heard that um, the food we are eating today is not the food that our grandparents ate. That food is long gone, whether it's in the plant kingdom or meats. Uh, so we really do need to eat organically. And while they may have been able to eat a, a diet and get their supplements and, and all of their micronutrients uh, and uh, phytochemicals out of that diet, I really do think today it is very important to take supplements. Uh, and especially with uh, trying to protect yourself against these um, viruses, making sure that you take zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D. Um, and if you do catch something, you up those doses. Um, for example, uh, early and sufficiently large doses of intravenous vitamin C has been shown to, to help and high doses of zinc and vitamin D. And um, here's a quick list that Bill Falloon of Life Extension Foundation said that he takes at the first sign of a cold or flu. Uh, the first one surprised me, Tagamet. Now this is just an over-the-counter heartburn medication, but it has beneficial side effects. They discovered that it boosts immune function by activating your natural killer cells. Also high allicin garlic extract. It's a very potent form of garlic that has direct viral killing effects. DHEA, that seems to boost one's ability to mount a very strong immune response and uh, lactoferrin, which uh, prevents certain viruses from entering the cell, which is where they replicate. Also zinc lozenges and melatonin um, and uh, higher doses, doses at night. Um, 
Now, after making sure your diet and supplementation create nutritional excellence, and and the fact that uh, you you've made sure that your vitamin or mineral uh, amounts are not deficient, then the next step would be to make sure that your hormone levels are optimal. Thyroid hormones, adrenal hormones such as cortisol and DHEA, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, get your hormone levels tested also. Some of you may have heard of Dr. Thierry Hertog. He's a world-renowned hormone expert out of Belgium. Um, he believes that having optimal levels of IGF-1 in your system might be one of uh, the best defenses against viral diseases and aging itself. So check those levels. You might want to consider HGH therapy. Um, also, he uh, named three other hormones that he says uh, seem to uh, be very good to protect you against viruses and also aging, um, cortisol, melatonin, and also uh, thymosin alpha-1. Now, note if you take cortisol, you need to take the same amount of DHEA. Uh, and if you do get sick, uh, thymosin alpha-1 and cortisol can be given at much higher doses. They've been proven to decrease the severity of COVID-19 without drugs. So those are definitely things to look at. And then finally, if you want to look at other areas that might be stopping you from having truly super immunity, look at your lifestyle, really think about your life, look at your stress levels. Everyone knows that when your stress levels are high, that absolutely blocks your immune system from kicking into gear and doing its job. So suddenly you, you catch something, your immune system is, is it's, it's off its game. So besides stress, we have uh, sleep. If you are not getting good quality deep sleep, that is, is affecting your immune system. There are many devastating effects, but they've proven that it actually hinders the uh, production of T cells because um, during deep sleep is when uh, that is uh, done uh, most. And uh, of course, have to mention regular exercise. You know, I heard that a lot of people cut down on exercise and also gained weight during the last four months. And they called it the quarantine 15. And uh, people joked that that was the average amount of weight that people gained. Uh, and this, it made me so unhappy to hear because this is the time when people could have and should have and still may be able to, uh, at this point, say, okay, I, I no more excuses. I need to build a superhero immune system and I absolutely need to exercise to not only lower my risk of things like uh, type two diabetes, heart disease, other chronic diseases, you will lose weight and you'll cut all those risk factors out, um, which also lowers your risk of any viral or bacterial infection taking hold and, and, and becoming uh, dangerous for you. Remember a healthy, strong body is your best defense. In closing, I would like to share a comment by George Church. Uh, many of you have heard of uh, this Harvard scientist. He's working on genetic engineering and CRISPR. He said, we have a strategy by which we can make any cell or any organism resistant to all viruses by changing the genetic code. So if you change that code just enough, now you get something where uh, the viruses or that virus expects a certain code provided by the host so they can replicate. And if that code is changed, the virus would have to change so many parts of its own RNA that it could never change them all at once. So that's it. It can't repl replicate and it also cannot then mutate. It's over. So one day, I do believe we will eradicate all diseases and with that all pandemics. And that will be a wonderful day for humanity, whether it's genetic engineering, nanomedicine or other new technology that may have not even come along yet. But until then, I hope I gave you some food for thought on creating your own superhuman immune system. Thanks. Thank you for so much, Kat. You, you definitely gave us a lot of food for thought, and uh, we 
I, I truly appreciate your, your talk. And uh, as uh, Natasha pointed out in the chat, you provide us with, 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 solid, with solid facts and, uh, and, and, and an actionable, actionable um, insights, which is, which is very great. And we truly appreciate that. Um, I do have a question for you, which is a, a personal concern of mine when dealing with diets and nutrition most of the time. And um, is that I keep hearing contrasting opinions on, on different diets. And, and for me, who, who not, I'm not a scientist and I'm not someone with that kind of education, it's, it's very difficult to clean, to clean up the noise. So on one hand, you have people advocating for vegan diets, vegetarian diets. In the other, in the, on the other hand, you have full carnivore diets. So how can someone clear up the noise and navigate this? mass of information that we constantly get. Well, I sure wish I had the answer to that because unfortunately with our, uh, you know, uh, no consensus among experts. And I personally know uh, through the life extension community, I know and have met in person so many uh, people uh, that some are vegan and they are the picture of health right? They glow. And uh, then I've met some people that were vegan and they had problems with it. And, and then when they switch to a full carnivore diet, it, it, uh, they are now the healthiest they say they've ever been. Um, what's interesting is if you read uh, the book by Dr. Gundry uh, called The Plant Paradox, where he talks about lectins. Um, and uh, by the time you're done with that book, you are absolutely 100% sure that lectins are the cause of most every possible illness and disease, and they're evil, and you will never eat another lectin containing food. Then you talk to uh, someone who uh, eats grains. Now, remember, uh, lectin containing foods are things like grains, um, and uh, so even wheat, rice, things like that um, are suspect. And you talk to someone who eats those things and they're in perfect health. Uh, then if you read the carnivore diet, you'll go into that thinking that has to be the worst diet that you've ever heard of. And then by the end of the book, you think, whoa, he has, he really made some. So remember on the internet or from different experts, you can always find um, so much, not just contrasting opinions, we're talking actual uh, results, you know, different um, different uh, interventions that they've done, and and they've done a lot of uh, double blind studies and placebo here, and they've proven. So every single person has proven their point. Uh, so what I would say to that is this: you do have to take everything with a grain of salt and and feel. How do you look and feel? And that's why if you take uh, all your blood tests and you put them out in front of you and, uh, you know, that's one of the things I do. I work with people to try to cut through all of that information and try to discover what is best for them. And the last thing I'll say on that is I think that even though many experts have differing opinions, I think that most people would agree, most experts would agree that if you stick with greens, um, onions, mushrooms, uh, beans, uh, seeds, uh, things like that, I really think you can't go wrong by at least having those in your diet. Okay, thank you for, for your answer. I think, yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty clear. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still concerned that the amount of information can get people very confused and, uh, and, and it's definitely not an easy, an easy landscape to navigate. Um, I have another question for, 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 for you coming from the community. Uh, and they're asking, do you think that you will reach longevity escape velocity? I certainly hope so. I sure hope so. Um, and um, if I live long enough, I do believe that I believe all humanity will reach that point. And is it, um, um, I, I don't think, you know, I 
hoped for that 30 and 40 years ago. Um, and a lot of things, then it was more of a pipe dream or a hope. But look where, where we've come. Uh, so I do believe we will reach that. And um, if I am taken out uh, too soon by uh, you know a, a big pandemic or something, I am signed up for cryonic suspension just in case, so that uh, you know at some point when they if, if I was taken out by a pandemic, maybe they'll be able to revive me at some point in the future when they have uh, you know when we've eradicated all those with the genetic engineering or nanomedicine. And uh, I'll still have, you know, that's kind of my second chance. So. And you said you, you, you were hoping for it like 30, 40 years ago. Um, what did you think back then? Actually, did you think back then that by now we would have reached longevity escape velocity? Well, you know, um, I, was, uh, I was seven years old in uh, New York when I went to the 1964 World's Fair. And uh, there in the Chevrolet Pavilion was right there on the floor was a uh, prototype of the first flying car. And I looked at my dad and said, hey, by the time I'm driving, that's what I'll be in. So uh, things have not always uh, come along as quickly as we thought they should or would or wish they had. Um, I think in many ways, Things have occurred that we never even expected. You know, when I was young, of course, there was no internet. Uh, so we have really moved forward in so many ways, but then we are so behind in other ways. And when it comes to uh, infectious disease, which we're dealing with right now, I read something and it said uh, a, a kind of a sad joke that is uh, made by um, a lot of microbiologists and epidemiologists, they say, we went from, uh, when it comes to infectious disease, we went from the 19th century into the 20th century and then into the 19th century. So while we are so far ahead technologically in so many areas, we have a long way to go with this, so. What, when did you start taking longevity supplements, if I can ask? In my 20s, uh, which was uh, the late 70s, I had uh, gotten into the whole you know, exercise craze. I became a, um, uh, an, an exercise instructor, but I didn't know enough then about, you know, I thought exercise was it. Um, but once I started to do that and I wanted to have more energy and, and more um, speed and, and more uh, get fatigue less, I started to read. And at that point, uh, I learned more about nutrition and supplementation. So probably I was already um, in my late 20s before I, you know, maybe almost 30 before I really took uh, charge in, in that way. Okay, great. But by then, then I began to take things like um, life extension mix. I, I started to learn about every, every, uh, every supplement I could. And from then on, you know, so for the last 30 years, that has been my focus. Fantastic. Then I'm not too late. Thank you so much, uh, Kat, for your, for your talk and for your answers. It was wonderful to have you. And thanks again. Thank you.